Hi, and welcome to The Short Stuff. I'm Josh. Chuck's here, too. Jerry's hanging around out there, just kind of loitering, smoking cigarettes with her leather jacket on, being a bad kid. She and didn't smoke. This makes us stuff you should know. <laughs> Don't ruin the illusion, Chuck. I know. Uh, so this is about water towers, and we need to shout out a very special person. This is not only from our old uh, House Stuff Works website that we used to write for, mm-hmm. but the very founder, his name is Marshall Brain. Yeah, that's his real he, name. That's his real name, and he created House Stuff Works so many years ago. Mm-hmm. And uh, technically is why we have a job doing what we do today. Mm-hmm. So uh, hats off to you, Marshall, because he used to write everything himself. Yeah. And this is one of the, kind of the good old Marshall Brain articles. This is a Marshall Brain special, Water Towers. Um, that was very Marshall Brain, too. He used to totally tackle is. kind of like, hey, how does that air conditioner work? That's Let exactly me tell you. Right. I think he wrote how air conditioners work in his kitchen in North Carolina years ago. For <laughs> real. So. Yeah. So um, one of the things that Marshall points out, and we're on a first-name basis with him, don't worry, um, is that you very rarely run into a water failure. Like as a utility goes, the pressure of water – now, something Mm -hmm. might have happened and it may be brown. It may have lead in it. True. His point is is that your water pressure is pretty reliable as far as utilities go. Yeah, like you get a blackout, get internet outage, all that kind of stuff happens, but – if you ever go and turn your faucet on and nothing comes out, mm-hmm. then there something really bad has happened. <laughs> yeah, there's probably like a break in the, um, a water main, and that's why it lost pressure. And at that point, pressure is like the least of your worries. Right. But what we have to thank for all of this, and we had people recently write in about this. Yeah, for sure. S- suggesting this as a topic. I don't know if you took a name down, did you? I'm looking now. Sorry. Sorry, uh, uh, listener. If we don't get your name, but uh, people suggested water towers, but we have water towers to thank for this. And it's a very simple thing. If you drive through a a town and you look up and you see (laughs) a a big giant water tower, it may be uh, painted to look like something cool, like a, like a Georgia peach Mm -hmm. or or a a walnut, a Georgia peach or a buttocks, depending on your perspective, (laughs) or it may not, or it may just have the town's name or it may have nothing on it. But in that tower is water, about five, I'm sorry, about 50 times as much water, and this is a generalization, as you might find in a backyard swimming pool. Mm -hmm. And that water is very tall because it needs to be tall because it uses gravity to make that water pressure happen. And that water tower helps spell the water pump that sends water through your town. Yeah, and it's really, really simple. Because it's just a huge, giant water tank, and because it's elevated, it can use gravity to pressurize that water, right? It gets it going when it starts to drop. And that's it. Like, that's a water tower. There's nothing special about it aside from its height or that it looks like a peach. It's a really, really (laughs) simple idea, but it's also a really ingenious idea that really, really works because no pump is needed. So if you do have a power outage in your whole town, that's why you still have water pressure. And because of the amount of water in it, they usually can cover the amount of time it will take to get those pumps back online so you never are out of water. Yeah, I think in the idea that there's enough water in the tower to cover the town for like a day. Yes. And I I mean, I would guess you could probably deal, unless it was a major natural disaster. Let's say it was a routine problem with electricity or the pumps or right. something like that. Yeah, I would like extended. Yeah, I guess you could probably deal with just about any problem to get the pumps going within a day. Um, again, I think Jackson, Mississippi just found out that you can go yeah. many days without water pressure at all uh, if you have a bad enough natural disaster with the floods that they had. But I think under normal circumstances, if you have a, a water tower, it's got a day's worth of water in it, and most of the time it's going to cover you. Yeah, that's the idea. Yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about these statistics or this math, because Marshall was kind enough to do the math many years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, Every foot of height for a water tower uh, provides 0.43 pounds per square inch of pressure. Mm -hmm. Uh, He says a municipal water supply will run between 50 and 100 PSI. So you're going to have to have, you know, it's very simple math. You do the math to figure out how big, how tall your tower needs to be. Right. Uh, along with how much water you're going to need. And bing, bang, boom, you build it, you fill it up with water, and you're done. Right. Um, I saw that the average um, 
a PSI that comes out of a faucet in a house is between 40 and 45 and 60 is the max. Okay. So if you're on com- a completely, if your town is totally flat at sea level, um, you would need to have between a 93 and 104 foot water tower to to achieve those pressures of 40 to 45 or 140 foot water tower to hit that 60. All right. Yeah. That makes sense. It's probably wrong because I did the math, but, you know. No. I say we take a break. I'm going to go over my work again. All right. And we'll be right back. So, Chuck, like you said, a water tower is pretty big. Uh, it can have a million and a half gallons. I'm guessing if you've got a, a town that's flush with, I don't know, local casino money or something like that, <laughs> you probably have one that holds even more water than that. <laughs> There's a lot of toilets flushing in the casino. Right. Well, and that brings up this point, right, that it actually lets your, your city save on the the size of the pumps they uh, buy for their water supply, because your your city does have pumps under normal circumstances. That's how water initially gets pressurized from the treatment plant to begin with. But mm-hmm. because there's such things as water towers, they can cover things like peak demand so that you only have to buy pumps that can handle the average amount of demand, right? Right. So in the morning when everyone's taking showers and uh, they're having their morning constitutional. <laughs> uh, there's going to be a lot of water pumping through the system, and that's when they rely on that water tower to spell the pumps. Uh, when demand is less, those that water tower is going to fill back up. Right. Uh, the pump's going to say, all right, we don't need as much water, so we're going to give some back to you, mm-hmm. and you hold on to it until we need it tomorrow morning. And it's just sort of a beautiful little cycle. Yeah, and um, the reason or the way that that happens is the way that the the water system is configured. So you've got the water treatment plant shooting out water to the pump station, which pressurizes the water initially. And then that from out of the pump station goes to the, you know, people's houses. But right after the pump station, say, you will have the water tower connected and water goes in or out depending on demand. So when there's so much demand that the pump can't handle it, the the water just starts to naturally come out of the water tower to yep. supplement it. And then when there's a, an a excess of it, of um, pressure from the pumps, that's when that water tower gets filled back up. And if there's neither... This is a little-known fact. Your town's water tower will explode in a thermonuclear explosion and take your entire town out. Really? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) There's only one way to Uh, find out. If you've ever been to New York City, say it. New York City? (laughs) (laughs) If you've ever been there and you've looked out of your hotel room and seen uh, those big water tanks on top of all those buildings mm-hmm. and just thought, man, you never really notice those until you notice them. And they are everywhere. Yeah, That's because New York is a, a city of tall buildings. And a lot of those buildings, uh, they don't even have to be that tall to exceed the, what your water pressure can handle, like to get water up to the top floors of those apartments and offices and things. So all those buildings have their own little water tanks sitting up there on top. And it does the same thing that those water towers do in the small towns that you drive through. Yeah, it's pretty neat. It's so New York, too. Very New York. We got my, I got my own tank up there. <laughs> a lot of those buildings, too, will have a lot of uh, pumps uh, themselves, not just water towers, but also pumping like systems, pump. too. Yeah. yeah, especially ones that are, you know, flush with casino money. <laughs> or buildings in New York that are known for lots of pooping. Sure, which is, there's a lot of buildings in New York known for that. Yeah, we won't mention any, though. The only murders in the building building, that's a big pooping building. (laughs) I love that show. It's a great show, for sure. It is. Did you finish up uh, this last season? No, I'm still in the middle of it, actually. I I started, and then I was like, I'm already out of episodes on episode three, so I was waiting for the rest, and I think it finished, right? right? Yeah, yeah, it's all out. We watched it. It's a lot of fun, and uh, just reaffirms that uh, Martin Short is one of the funniest people. Ever to live. Man. 
Love that guy. You just spoiled it. Martin Short's funny in the rest of the season. God, he's so funny. So there's one last thing about water towers, Charles, that I think we should talk about, um, that they will save you money on your fire insurance for your house, huh? Yeah, I think that is the case because uh, you got to have, you know, a lot of water pressure on demand if something is on fire. And that water tower is going to guarantee that if there is a fire, you're not going to run out of water pressure to put that fire out. So uh, you're going to get your fire insurance rates uh, determined by the fact that you have a great water system and water tower. Fantastic. And before we go, we should shout out some of the people who wrote in to request water towers. There are so many of them, we cannot name them all. But wow, starting all the way back in 2019 with Lila okay. Craig, <laughs> all the way to two weeks ago with Megan Stahl. And, thanks and everyone to in between. Two, yeah, and everyone in between. That's right. Uh, and since we just thanked a bunch of people that you've not met yet, Uh, That means short stuff is out. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.